Hello everyone, I am Cristian Rinaldi from Politecnico di Milano and today I will talk about the ferroelectric control of spin to charge conversion in germanium telluride. The driving force of this, for this research is the consideration that by 2030 we are going to consume more or less 20% of the total electricity for ICT according at least to this energy forecast appear in nature in 2018. We are in a very data angry society and we are using more and more energy for store and retrieve our data as well as for computing. As a material scientist, we have the opportunity to look for a solution to reduce such power consumption of memories and computing elements in order to reduce this trend. A really promising solution that I like uh, a lot has been proposed by Intel in 2015. And this published then in Nature um, in 2019. The architecture they proposed for Autojoule Electronics is called the Magneto-Electric Spin Orbit Logic, suggesting a spintronic component that is composed by uh, three kinds of materials, a ferroelectric, a ferromagnet, and a spin orbit material or stack. Here, a nanomagnet that you can see in the picture in red is used to store the information in a non-volatile fashion. To change the orientation of such bit, you can use magnetoelectric coupling with the ferro with, with the ferroelectric in contact with the ferromagnet. To read out the, fer the, ferro the, the, the magnetization state, um, spin to charge conversion is employed. Spin polarized current is injected from the ferromagnet down to the spin orbit material and then converted in an output current flowing into this, into this interconnect due to spin to charge interconversion in the blue layer in the picture. This exploiting, for example, either Rajba, Elstein effect or spin hole effect. The device would be scalable, concatenable, and takes all the advantages of a favorable scaling loads. But nevertheless, it remains extremely demanding from the point of view of performances that are acquired to to the materials involved in the structure. Very high spin orbit conversion efficiency, as well as ultra low switching voltages for the ferroelectric and so on. So the, the spin orbit readout, so one of the two building blocks of, of this structure, has been demonstrated in 2020 for the couple cobalt iron uh, in contact with platinum. So platinum is the spin to charge conversion element. But nevertheless, the realization of the full mesostructure is still um, far, I think, from realization. And uh, instead, what I want to propose here is an extreme simplification uh, and nonetheless a different uh, logic, uh, which is, could be called ferroelectric spin orbit logic. And this will rely on germanium telluride or similar compounds where the information is no more stored in the ferromagnetization of the, in the nanomagnet, but in the ferroelectric polarization of the ferroelectric material directly if we are able to provide a material in which the ferroelectricity itself is able to modulate the spin to charge conversion in the same element, possibly in a material compatible with CMOS electronics. To do that, for this aim, ferroelectric rajba semiconductors are ideal candidates because they merge three important ingredients. The first one is, is being the ferroelectricity, which represents the non volatile state variable that you can modify using electric fields. And uh, this ferroelectricity in germanium telluride is able, as demonstrated in this paper here, to modify the band structure of the material also in terms of spin properties. For example, um, ferroelectricity is responsible for the creation of a, a giant rush by effect in the band structure, whose chirality uh, of spins uh, can be changed from clockwise to anti-clockwise depending on the direction of the polarization vector. And together with the semiconductivity and silicon compatibility of the compound, this could open the way uh, to uh, several advances in the sense that I've shown you before. Of course, there are two main questions to be addressed. The first one is the switchability and the uh, uh, possibility to, rely, to, to do the gating of this semiconductor in order to drive and control the ferroelectricity, the, fer the ferroelectric polarization. And then, of course, one has to demonstrate that there is a significant spin to charge conversion which depends on the ferroelectric polarization um, 
for, for, for the control. So um, here you see in the slide that um, concerning the ferroelectric gating, the question is, can we switch a semiconductor which is highly doped? Uh, Jamaican telluride has 10 to the 21 cubic centimeter um, um, carriers, uh, free carriers, uh, be, because of germanium vacancies in the lattice. And considering the depletion region of five nanometer, this, this gives the, uh, to germanium telluride the possibility to allocate more or less 15 microcoulombs per centimeter square when you apply an external electric field to switch the polarization. And so the electric field can be screened somehow. But at the same time, there is another mechanism, which is the ferroelectric switching, which is another way for the system to reduce its energy when an external field is applied. So ferroelectric switching can bring to the surface up to 70 microcoulomb per square centimeter, which means that ferroelectricity is in, it could be indeed a very effective way, uh, rather than screening by free carriers, to screen the external electric field. So switching is, could, could be achievable. So we try to investigate this possibility and uh, in order to electrically detect uh, the switching of the semiconductor with such high leakage current, so, so with, with such an high conductivity, a method is needed uh, because the methods used for standard uh, oxide are, is, is, not, is not applicable here. Uh, we realize that like in Shakti diodes, it is possible to identify the ferroelectric states by measuring the resistivity of the metal semiconductor junction. So uh, being, uh, uh, the charge uh, that the semiconductor brings to, to, towards the metal, positive or negative, depending on the orientation of the ferroelectric polarization, then we would expect a different band bending at the interface and boost a different conductive state for the two uh, saturated up, uh, outward or inward state for the polarization. And so we were able to, to try to, to do this. So we, we provide uh, Jonian Pellaway with some um, metal on top metal contacts on top and writing, uh, sending uh, writing paths of sufficient amplitude and then reading at low voltage the resistive state, we were able to see that indeed plus 10 volt or minus 10 volt are able to switch 20 nanometer of um, uh, epitaxial germanium telluride 111 grown on silicon. And if you repeat this experiment by varying the amplitude of the writing paths, you will see an hysteresis loop which resembles hysteresis loop of ferroelectricity for materials. And uh, the possibility to switch from uh, up to uh, outward to inward state is, uh, is um, as a long endurance. So we can switch uh, continuously and the cyclability could last up to 10 to the five cycles. So, so that we're, we, we, were, we were very happy, but nevertheless, we have to confess that germanium telluride is, is a delicate material. And in some sense, you have to be careful with this kind of switching because it, it is prone to phase changes and also to ionic movement in the lattice. And so we try to understand better the situation and to confirm that there is a correlation between this electroresistance and the distribution of ferroelectric domains underneath the gate. For this reason, we, provide, uh, we, we create some very thin con metallic contacts on top of the germanium telluride surface and we were uh, able to map the distribution of the ferroelectric domains underneath the gate by scanning uh, this surface with, by piezo response force microscopy. And uh, uh, if you do that, so uh, for example, you measure the resistivity versus the writing voltage pulse, and you see this resist loop that they have shown before for the electroresistance, and then you repeat the experiment by mapping um, the ferroelectric domains on the gate, and you see that there is a progressive uh, movement. Uh, from a, a, a mostly a inward state to a totally uh, polarized uh, out of plane uh, ferroelectric polarization. So, and uh, if you calculate the PFM phase and you overlap this PFM phase with the electroresistance, you discover that there is a very good agreement between the two, uh, suggesting that the uh, electroresistance is really connected to the ferroelectric state of the semiconductor. And we also provide a way to have an undestructive readout of the ferroelectric state, which is quite quite nice to, to have. Of course, with this ingredient in mind, uh, we have to demonstrate the second crucial point that I have cited before. So the possibility to convert such ferroelectric state into a charge current by spin to charge conversion. And uh, for, for this reason, we, we collaborate with Laurent Villa and Jean-Philippe Patanet from Grenoble and we, do, we, we did spin pumping experiment on the structure illustrated here. So we deposit some iron 
uh, epitaxial iron 111 on top of germanium telluride 111. And the iron layer is excited by radio frequency radiation um, to process. And uh, this procession relax the angular momentum and creates a pure spin current going into germanium telluride that eventually can convert the spin current into a charge current by a spin to charge conversion. And you see here in the graphs that at the ferromagnetic resonance of the iron layer, indeed we were able to see a peak in the charge production measured as a lateral voltage on these samples. And uh, when we um, were able to switch the ferroelectric polarization from up to down, we were able to see a switch in the corresponding charge production, which is the crucial point of this result, of, of this research. So we are able to modulate the charge current production acting on the ferroelectric polarization. This effect survives room temperature without me uh, measurement um, uh, modification. And so we achieve room temperature spin to charge conversion, which importantly is comparable in efficiency with that of platinum, which is one of the reference metals for spin to charge conversion. So this is the crucial point uh, that I wanted to underline. Concerning the, what happens in the germanium telluride layer when a spin current uh, is injected, uh, we rely on the calculation by Marco Buongiorno Nardelli and Jagoda Slavinska from the University of North Texas. They were able to show that in a thin film of germanium telluride, it is indeed possible to switch by acting on the ferronetic polarization, the spin hole angle or equivalently the tensor element associated to the spin to charge conversion in this direction that we are considering. And the fact is that the polarization itself, which um, modifies the band structure of the material in a non-trivial way, is able to modify the spin hole angle since the spin hole angle depends on the spin dependent very curvature calculated on the wall. Um, band structure. So the intrinsic spin all effect also accounts for the symmetry, for the switchability of the spin to charge conversion, and also for the magnitude in the sense that we were able to see that the effect predicted for spin, um, for, from calculation is in agreement with uh, spin all effect of few percent uh, calculated for germanium, experimentally determined by uh, spin pumping in germanium telluride. So to conclude, I would like to say that this result opened the way to the device I proposed at the beginning of this, uh, of, of this talk, in which a static nanomagnet could inject a spin current into germanium telluride and germanium telluride polarization governs the production of an output charge current that can eventually drive a second element um, cascaded in this direction. Okay. So um, the readout is provided by spin to charge conversion. And the important point here is that this semiconductive platform is compatible with the silicon technology. And so can be a realistic platform for the development of attajoule electronic based on spintronic elements. And with this, let me just uh, summarize the main conclusions. Paralytic switching of the semiconductor uh, germanium telloid is being achieved through gating. And um, we are able, we are able to, um, we are able to control the ferroelectric, uh, um, ferroelectrically control the room temperature spin ch to charge conversion in germanium telluride. And more important, we proposed a device that simplifies the meso structure proposed by Intel, thanks to the um, peculiar properties of ferroelectric Rajva semiconductor and that we call ferroelectric spin orbit logic. Uh, let me uh, finish, conclude that, uh, saying that also, uh, please take also a look at this very nice paper from our collaborators, Paul Noel, Manuel Bibes, and Jean-Philippe Atanet, uh, since they publish in Nature on a different system, but with the same concept, so the, control, the possibility to ferroelectrically control spin to charge conversion in 2D systems, so a two-dimensional electron gas, by using a ferroelectric substrate in contact uh, with it, um, where the spin to charge conversion is given not by spin all effect, but is provided by Edelstein and Rajba uh, for two Um With this, I would like to thank you for your kind attention and uh, to thank all the people involved in this huge work. Thank you very much. <laughs>